go. Good morning, everybody. Happy hump day. It's Wednesday. And listen, we're going to get right into it. This is a serious topic. So um, this is going to support those of you who are struggling at all. See if I can get that little fly away there. If you're struggling at all with the way that you think, you know, like the, the power of your thoughts. You hear me talking all the time about um, thinking and how the way that you think and the thought patterns that you have, how they have a huge influence on what you are able to accomplish or not accomplish, right? And really, not just because of accomplishments, but your overall happiness and joy, right? Like a couple of weeks ago, we talked about how to actually enjoy life in the process um, on the journey of going to where it is that you believe you'll be happy at once you get there, right? Because that's the only reason we ever desire something is because we believe that when we get it, we just believe it. We don't know it to be true, but we believe that when we achieve it, when we get there, when we have it, when we experience it, when we are a certain way, we look a certain way, all of those things, we believe it will make us happier, more fulfilled, stronger, more relevant, whatever it is that we attach to it. And that's not bad. But we talked about how do you actually enjoy your, your process along the way? Because I often work with women and men who are really goal-driven, right? They're ambitious. They've achieved success in other areas. And they're typically coming to me because they haven't been able to get that, the type of success they've gotten somewhere else in a new area or in another area of their life. And they really need help focusing, um, not getting distracted, and managing their mind through it. Okay, so one of the biggest things that I see people come up against as they are pursuing an audacious goal, right? I teach my clients how to set goals that are bigger than they know how to achieve. That's why we focus on the on the bigger vision versus the little goals. You can back your small goals into it, but you've got to be motivated by the bigger vision. So one of the things that I see people struggle with um, is how along the way along the way um, on, in your day-to-day -day life, how do you keep yourself thinking daily in a way that doesn't actually interfere with what it is you are believing for, for what it is that you are aspiring to? What I'm going to share with you today, I think is really mind-blowing, right? So I study everything around mindset. And lately I've been uh, following um, a couple of people and reading some books really on like the science, like the deep science of the brain. So I want to credit this person that I'm going to use um, uh, some of her work today. Um, and her name is, if you want to look her up, Carolyn Leaf, L-E-A-F. And she's like a neuroscientist or, yeah, I might be giving her the wrong title, but I've been watching some of her work and it's, it's interesting because I started studying mindset in a more esoterical, like I was studying quantum physics and all of that, like literally probably 20 years ago I started. I just happened upon this stuff as a, um, you know, lost and disgruntled and searching and curious, um, you know, um, young lady. I think I was like 20-ish or something. And so when I got into this, I wasn't really studying the deep science of it, although quantum physics is science, right? But what, what happened is later on when I started to read the science, it was so interesting how all of the science, even though they say it in a different way, was actually confirming everything that I understood about law of attraction and mindset and the power of our thoughts, okay? And so when I was listening to Carolyn Leaf, and I'm gonna share with you what she says about how you are damaging your brain. And so when I was listening to her talk about this, I was like, whoa, I was blown away because it's what I know intrinsically. It's what I have experienced through my own practice, through my own method that I put together simply by looking back at my life and looking at what was the way that I changed my beliefs and my mindset around different things that I was struggling with or that were new to me. It was all the same, right? That's how I developed my, mind, my, my method around mindset. So when she shares what she shares that is literally backed by science, it just blew my mind that, wow, this is what I've been teaching without that jargon, right? Like without even knowing like how to even talk about it on that level. So I think this is going to blow your mind too. And yesterday we talked about, um, 
yesterday we talked about, uh, well, Monday we talked about getting disgusted by something, right? So that you can actually use it as a launching off pad, right? A launching off point to actually create something different. That's part of my method as well. And then um, yesterday we talked about how do you go all in, right? Like we're coming up on a new year, we're coming up on a new decade. How do you actually go all in as opposed to just, I use this analogy a lot, like you you have something that you want and you say that you are working towards, but typically you have like one toe in the pool, right? You you have you ever been to the pool and like the water's cold, you want to get in and the kids are in and they're screaming, come on, jump in. And you've got one toe in the pool. You like wait till your toe warms up. Then you put like your foot in the pool, right? An hour later, you might have like your leg in the pool or you might be standing in the pool with your arms up and like the water is waist high and you're still cold. You're still cold. Meanwhile, you know what happens if you just jump in the pool, if you just dive in the pool, like you're cold for one instant. And when you come up, it feels great. Just jump in. Right. And that's an analogy I use a lot of times when I'm coaching people who are stuck, because believe it or not, ambitious driven people, I believe, I believe this a hundred percent that at some point in their life and maybe multiple points, they also get stuck. They start to pull back. They start to play small fears, start to creep up self doubt. They forget really what they have inside of them and, and what they've actually Um, accessed inside themselves in the past to to achieve the things that they've achieved. And that happens for a number of reasons. Like life can kick you in the butt sometimes, right? And so it can shake you. Sometimes it's a divorce. Sometimes it's the loss of a loved one. Sometimes it's an addiction. Like things happen, right? That, That have us get quote unquote stuck. And so I often Um, work with people who are um, at that point in their life. So um, here's what I want to share with you about um, what Caroline said. Okay. So we were talking about going all in, right? So typically like, you, you know, like you're standing in the pool when you could just jump in, you could just go all in, be committed. And then it's over and done with, as opposed to just lingering around with one, one appendage in the pool and not actually getting the full experience, right? Not actually being submerged, not actually feeling the joy, right? So often we're so close to the things that we want but we can't see them because we're still above the surface. We haven't do- dove in. We haven't gone all in, right? So we're still up here just playing around with our toe in the pool, right? And wondering why we're not having the full experience of being submerged in whatever it is that we say that we want, okay? So here is what's going to blow your mind about what Caroline uh, shared with me. Caroline Leaf, L-E-A-F, if you want to look her up and do any reading. Okay. A couple things here. So if you're going to go all in, we talked about getting rid of all your excuses, writing them out and writing two reasons why you can bust that excuse, right? The opposite, why you can actually make it um, possible, right? And we talked about um, breaking free from something, right? And then, and then replacing whatever it is you're breaking free from. Okay. So two astounding things I'm going to share with you right now. You've heard like it takes 30 days, it takes 60 days, it takes 90 days. People say that all the time, like to actually establish a habit, right? In the fitness world, we always use 90 days um, because it takes that long for you to actually see the results of your consistency, right? So here's what science has proven. It actually takes 63 days to build a new belief, 63 days. Write that down. My lipstick is always a mess. It takes 63 days to build a belief. Okay, that's number one. And that's proven. So you don't have to guess, is it 30, is it 90? Okay, the second thing I want to tell you about that is, and see if you can see yourself in this. So think about that, 63 days right? I I teach a get set method and I have people go through it and then like they don't return to it. And it's like, no, you've got to stay in it in order to actually embed the new belief 
and the new pattern of thinking that you are um, believing for, right? It's not just like do something for a day, a weekend, you know, a week or something, and then and then you're it's done, right? It's the same thing in fitness. I like this is why I love fitness and working with athletes because they get it right? They get it that it takes the consistency and the practice. They just need to learn how to apply it in other areas, um, which is why I stay in fitness because it helps me keep my edge in business and in all these other areas. So it takes 63 days to build the belief. Stay with me here. Okay. Thanks for posting that Catherine. Guess when most people give up. I want to see what your guesses are. Those of you who are still on Catherine, Sandra, Daniela, I don't, I can't see who else is on Isidro type in the comments. At what day do you think that most people give up? I'm going to give you time to post it because I want to see, I, I want you to put it out there so that you can see how close you are to actually knowing this reality because we're going to get into the brain damage part. But I want you to tell me how long somebody post, shout it out. <laughs> Sandra said seven days. Okay. Anybody else? Good guess, Sandra. Anybody else? How many days before people give up? It takes 63 days of an actual practice to actually have that new belief. People give up by day 60. Oh God, I wish if only that were true, Daniela, but I see what you're saying. They give up when they're close, right? So Isidro says 21 days. You guys, this is going to blow your mind. Most people give up by day three, four at the latest. Like the majority of people give up at day three to four. Think about this. Think about all the workshops and events that you've gone to on a weekend, right? Two day workshops, three day retreats, right? So think about how many people go to these workshops, yourself included, these retreats, these events that are two to three days, and you get so fired up, you're hooked, you're enrolled, you're like, I'm going to do this, like I'm committed, you take all these notes, you got all this information. What happens when you get home? You've all experienced it. I have experienced it. I have experienced it, right? And I'm as focused and driven as they come. So I've experienced it. I know you've experienced it. So you get home, you've gotten all this information. You're totally excited about it. I'm in, I'm all in. What happens at day four, day five, literally physically in your body, you need to know this. Those endorphins start to die out. You, you were literally experiencing a high for a couple of days. Your endorphins were high, like everything was on overdrive, and then you come down. I'm looking at my phone because I had a note about something I wanted to share with you on this, um, and I was hoping that I could find it, but I don't have it right now. Um, but that's okay. So you're literally like, what happens is you just... Think about it. Can, can you guys tell me in the likes or in the comments? You've had this experience, right? Like you're all fired up about the event and you're going to do all these things. You're committed to doing all these things. Then, like three or four days later, um, it's like, shit, what do I do? Or you lose your motivation, you lose your inspiration. And then you have all these notes, all these things that you did, another workshop that you invested time and money in, and you don't do anything with it. There's a reason why, did you, you guys might not know this, but legally in most states, I don't think it's a federal law, I think it's a statewide law, but if you sign a contract, now I'm like giving you all the information, if you sign a contract at one of these events, I think you have something like 72 hours legally to get out of it. And it's for this reason exactly. It's for this reason exactly. Thank you, Isidro. <laughs> Isidro says, my two-day workshop actually changed his life and still going. But I didn't send you guys home with a bunch of information to do. That was a two-day where the intention was to serve you for two days and then make an offer to join me in the get set. And the reason it's still changing your life is because you actually came into the offer and were part of the program, right? 
you didn't go home and just try to apply everything on your own. But the reason you have 72 hours is for this phenomenon. It's because people get so high on the information, the energy, especially if someone is a good enroller, right? Like they're really good at this. Not, it doesn't mean they're tricky. It's just that they are who they are, right? And so you want that energy. You want what they have. But just because somebody is good at what they're presenting and they're good at their information and they're good at their their job it doesn't mean you're going to be right so you've got to get really intimate with this process right and this is why with a lot of my clients i have them unsubscribe from stuff emails don't sign up for anything while you're working with me because that is a distraction and and every time we sign up for a lot of stuff unless it's relevant to the step you're in, which is why in my, in my group program, I bring in some outside experts at the time that I know my group is ready for it, right? Otherwise, they get, everybody gets distracted. Okay, so that's a little digression. But, um, so the thing you've gotta get good at, this is what you've got to master. And this is why after teaching health, after teaching fitness, after teaching entrepreneurship and all of that, that's why everything for me, when I decided what is the thing I want to be known for, what is the thing that I know has helped me the most, regardless of where I've gotten the result, I've gotten the result in money. I've gotten the result in, in my marriage. I've gotten the result in my fitness. I've gotten the result in business, right? Guess what? It hasn't been from the different formulas in those in those individual things, right? It's been one way, one method, and that's the mindset piece. So when I was listening to her about this, it just like grounded me so much in how important the mindset work is. It's so important. And it's not enough to just talk about mindset. It's like this woman lives, breathes, and studies the science of it. Okay, so what you've got to get good at is knowing how to stay in it when the high comes down. Does that, does that make sense? You've got to get good at staying in it when that high goes down, when the endorphins go down. This is why commitment and going all in is so important. And, and, and it's not enough to just get it intellectually. You've got to put a practice behind it. So here's what she says about brain damage. And I'm just going to write down what she said. I mean, I'm going to, I wrote down what she said. I'm going to read it. She said, we cause brain damage when we think and talk toxic. Listen, about, listen to this because I want you to pay attention to where you're doing this in your own life. We cause brain damage when we think and talk toxic or and or when we create cognitive dissonance i'll tell you what that means in a minute but let me say that again i want you to write it down and really get it we cause brain damage when we think and talk toxic think about the areas of your life that you talk toxic it could be about your body it could be about your money situation it could be about a relationship whatever it is it could be about other people right we cause brain damage when we think think and talk this is part of my method right i talk about the tricky triad sandra some of you on here know about my method right the tricky triad of the the things that you think become your beliefs then you start to back it up with your language right which becomes a triad of like toxic emotion if those thoughts are toxic okay or when we create cognitive dissonance what does it mean to create cognitive dissonance it's when we say one thing but we actually mean something else okay when we say something that we're not actually believing this is why, and I've blown the people's minds when I teach law of attraction, because no amount of vision board that you make and no amount of affirmations that you say actually mean shit. They don't do anything if you don't actually believe it, if you don't actually believe it. And this is like, my clients know that when they work closely with me, like in our recent VIP day, and they went through recreating, rescripting a belief, a belief that was holding them back. 
in a sense, it's, it, it's creating a new affirmation, right? Could, because we're affirming all the time anyway. Whatever you're thinking on a repetitive basis, whatever you're telling yourself, whatever you're believing about, those are affirmations. But here's the difference in the way that I teach them. And it's very personal. It's very deep. It's very intense. I don't let them get away with the affirmation until it's very clear to me that they feel it and they believe it. Because cognitive dissonance is when we're saying something that we don't believe. This is why when I'm teaching coaches and new entrepreneurs how to price things, like a lot of times they're way under pricing and I just move them up a little bit at a time because if they start charging something that they don't believe they're worth or that they, believe, they don't believe they can deliver on, some people get it quickly and they can shift to that belief. Most people don't. But if, they, if they're charging something or selling something that they don't believe they can enroll or uh, deliver on or they don't believe they're worthy of or they don't believe the value themselves, then it's not going to work. They're not going to sell. They're not going to enroll people into it, right? So it's the same thing with your thoughts and your beliefs. You cannot talk about something that you don't actually believe, that you don't embody. This is another piece of how I tell my clients, listen, if you want to be a change maker, if you want to have any kind of influence over people, it's not what you tell them. It's how you live your life. You've got to be out there living by example. You've got to be and embody whatever it is that you're teaching and coaching. So you actually cause, so think about it. You've got these 63 days that you need to stay consistently practicing whatever belief that you have for yourself. So wherever you want to go all in with, okay? I saw, um, like Catherine, you said you're going all in with uh, getting to one client a week, which is like you could say four new clients a month, right? So believing for it, first uncovering any beliefs that are that you believe are holding you back or like going through the process, right? Um, I call it a brain dump. I call it a mindset evaluation. I have a specific process for it. Any of you watching or watching the replay or watching on YouTube, let me know if um, you want. Actually, I'll, I'll put a link in here to my method so you can check it out. But it's doing that work, uncovering it. And then as you rescript whatever this new belief or this new thing you're going all in with, you've got to create thoughts, beliefs, language, affirmations, whatever it is around it that you actually believe when you're saying it. It's got to resonate. It's got to feel possible. You can't start out here. So many people come to me, they're like, they've never had a, they, they have a new business. They've never had a paying client. They've never made any money. And it's like, I want to make um, six figures this year because they see everybody else online talking like that. And it's like, okay, do you have experience? Um, with sales? Do you have experience enrolling people? Like, are you a great communicator? You know, uh, you know, do you have the audience, right? Do you have the consistency? Do you have the drive? Do you have, like, you got to have all these things. And have you ever had anyone pay you for this service? Okay, well, let's back up. And it's not about dimming your goal or making it smaller because my clients know I start with the bigger vision, right? So that person might have a, a vision of impacting a thousand people in, in five years. That's fine. But we're still not starting with like this, you know, way out here goal that you're so far from. We have the big vision, then you back things in because here's what happens when you start saying, I'm making, I'm making a hundred thousand dollars or I'm making a million dollars and you're just saying it as an affirmation but there's no real connection to you seeing it, feeling it, having the confidence around it, the conviction, then guess what? You're just saying it. Do you guys get that? Is that making sense? And what she's saying, what this scientist is saying is that when you do that, you're causing brain damage. I mean, how freaking mind blowing is that? You're literally causing brain damage. You're chipping away at parts of your brain because you're confusing it. You're saying, or you're putting a bunch of stuff in your head that doesn't actually connect with the other piece, right? The, 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 the part of your brain that gets it when you say, like, I'm drinking a um, skinny, um, what am I drinking right now? A, a, a skinny, uh, what's that thing? Eggnog, a skinny eggnog um, decaf coffee. 
when you like, when I say that it's the truth, I'm drinking it. There's no cognitive dissonance. There's no separation between the fact that I'm saying it and the fact that this is it. You get it? But if I say something like, you know, I'm a pink elephant. Do you know what I mean? I'm a pink elephant. I'm a pink elephant. I'm a pink elephant. I'm going to say it a hundred times in a day. That's my affirmation. I'm a pink elephant. I'm going to meditate on it. It doesn't make sense. I don't believe that. Maybe you believe that. I don't believe that. And so I'm causing brain damage because it's mixed signals. They don't connect. <laughs> Can you see me? I'm getting so like lit up about this because I freaking love this stuff. And when I read and hear a scientist talking about it, listen, my belief is there's God and science fits into that. I don't know what yours is. But so when I hear that stuff, I'm like, that's God speaking through the scientists and like confirming everything that I've been believing and that I've been proving in my own life and that I've seen clients get it and we're proving it in their life too. So that's what I want to leave you with today. I'm also going to put down here for anyone who's watching the replay. Um, the link to my get set method, because if you know right now that the most important thing you can do for yourself right now, so that you don't set another goal and set another resolution that you can't manage with your mind because you keep getting off track and you know that the, the, the piece around really mastering the way you think and having something, this is lifetime access actually, you know, when you get this and having something that you can actually sit with and practice 63 days, if you know that that would make the biggest difference for you, then don't wait. Don't skip steps. Like I can tell you from as many people who come to me and, and, and colleagues who send people to me and colleagues who hire me, other coaches and entrepreneurs, I can tell you that when you do it out of order, when you start working on all the techniques, the, the marketing, the, the whatever, you go out for the relationship of your dreams, yet you haven't done this work around your, your mindset, which also helps you um, um, master your emotions. When you haven't done this first, your foundation is very weak. And that's why eventually those successful people, those, those people who have accomplished different things here and there, and, 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 and are driven and doing or are, do, are doing, doing, doing all the seemingly right things, that's why they're reaching out to me at a certain point in their life because this piece is not solid. Get that foundation solid. After you watch this, let me know what's landing most for you and tag someone in this group. Tag someone, just find a couple names or somebody that you know that you believe that this would support who perhaps missed it this morning. Okay, guys, it's great to be here with you and um, have a beautiful Wednesday and I'll see you tomorrow live at 6.45. Lots of love, bye.